Uh, so it was myself and Tally Kunkel, she's the other lead author. Uh, what we really enjoyed was trying to put all of the MYP format, philosophy, components together in one place where teachers could really see that the MYP really isn't as difficult uh, as it seems to implement, especially in mathematics. Um, and coming up with some of the, the interesting and cool applications, because that took a lot of work, it's probably the most work uh, for the books themselves. Um, so finding those things, and when you find that nugget and a really good idea pops from that, and you get another one and another one, it's pretty motivating as well. So uh, to me, that was probably the most fun. So funny enough, the biggest challenge is finding cool applications of the math that you teach. Um, I think in other subject areas, it's probably pretty easy to um, marry a global context with content, but in mathematics it doesn't always work so well. So to find something that's authentic, that works, that you know kids will like and that teachers will really buy into uh, was probably the biggest challenge that we had because you could find one idea or two ideas, but we wanted to make sure that it, it ran throughout the entire unit and so to find enough of those things to sustain the whole unit was uh, the biggest challenge that we faced. I think Tally and I, we both realized that the ultimate would be to walk into a teacher's classroom and actually see them um, implementing the MYP. That, that, that experience, I think, is probably um, undeniably transformative, but we couldn't get that experience. So what would be the second best thing? Would be to sort of see how does a teacher plan and implement all the components um, in one unit. And so our main objective was to show people this is what a unit under the MYP could look like. This is how we envision it. You don't have to buy into every unit that we have. You don't have to use every activity. But is there a way where we could balance that inquiry and that application all in one place in text where normally you give the answers and then have kids apply? Could we get kids to develop their own answers first and then ans ask questions, maybe answer other questions on top of that? So the number one objective was to try to put on paper somehow what it might look and feel like in an MYP teacher's classroom. I think the main difference between the 4-5 book and the 1-2-3 book is probably an organization. Their book is organized along concepts. Uh, so each chapter will have a variety of content that explores the exact same context. So in representation, you might have some statistics, but you might also have some algebra. Our organization was every chapter will be a full-on unit, and so all the content that relates to that unit will be found in the same place. In the four or five books, you can find some of the statistics chapter in one, in one place, and then the rest of the uh, statistics chapter in another place, because they both explore different concepts. So that was probably the, the major differences in organization. Um, I think the second one is probably in terms of context. Their, their context usually happens at the end of each um, chapter, whereas ours happens to be developed throughout. So what we wanted was for teachers and students to see that the global context doesn't appear magically at the end, that it really does come from the very beginning and then you can develop that thing throughout. You know, it is a series, so you do want to make sure that there's that link between 1, 2, and 3, um, and 4, and 5. Uh, undeniably for the MYP, so probably the biggest consistency is the use of the similar terminology, all the um, aspects are in, involved in both books, just maybe to varying degrees, whereas we use all the criteria, they might use a single strand. Um, so we wanted to make sure that teachers, if they were going to use the entire series, they didn't somehow feel there was a, a big disjoint between 1, 2, and 3, and 4, and 5, so you had to keep that consistency. It's funny, Tal and I were talking about this the other day and we both agree that actually it's not that hard. Once you start thinking this way in terms of the MYP um, philosophy, that the content is really just what you're delivering. And so um, if, if you can wrap your mind around that, we actually found that, again, the most difficult part was the applications, is finding those good applications. But including investigations and ATL skills is just a natural byproduct of the learning process. And so once you start writing a unit that feels like what somebody might do in a classroom, it's actually pretty easy to incorporate all those other things at the same time. Uh, I think as math teachers, what we're really comfortable with is content. So I think the first thing you have to do is figure out what your content is and then how you're going to chunk that. How many different units uh, will you have? And I think most math teachers probably have between sort of eight and ten units. Um, and I would say that for most teachers, we all, we're, we're a bit of a perfectionist, so we all want everything to be ready for the beginning of the school year. And one piece of advice that both Tally and I would have is you've got to go slow. 
is you're not going to transform everything overnight. Your entire year won't be full on in units. You won't be having kids investigating everything that they learn. You won't have applications for everything. So you just got to go slow and choose those things that are easy. So if you have a unit on statistics, it's pretty easy to find a good global context for an application. If you have a unit on polynomial factoring, not so easy. So maybe leave that one till later. Um, and I, I think probably the, the most important part, especially in math, because I see this a lot in workshops, is that I think it's easier for us to develop a, or explore a global context once we've chosen the cool application. So once you know what the math is, and you know what you, want, what you want your kids to do with it, are they going to explore what it's like to live as a refugee? Are they going to explore uh, mathematical puzzles? Are they going to explore human and natural landscapes? Once you've figured that out, then you can go back and start writing all the little pieces. So I think it really starts with a good idea, especially for the application. So if you can start there, go slow, start with things that are easy, and then look for that application first. A lot of the more difficult aspects of unit writing sort of come into play right after that. <sighs> to narrow it down to one, uh, I think everybody's favorite is probably the mullet question. We have a, a unit on competition. Um, and Tally found this really great competition, I think, in Iowa, the Iowa State Fair about hairstyles and mullets is one of them. It's, we really like that. Um, Tally's really fond of uh, the statistics and probability, which brings in a lot of games. Some of the games we played as kids and some of the games that are current game shows and ones that we've never seen before. Um, we both really like the human and natural landscapes. I love the whole thing with, um, I didn't know there's a giant hexagon on Saturn, and yet at the, the North Pole there's a hexagon. It's, a, it's an amazing natural landscape. Uh, my personal favorite is probably, um, it's not maybe as real life as people would expect, is the mathematical puzzles. The whole unit is about tricks and puzzles. Um, I had a student who was showing me some card tricks, and he was sort of the inspiration for, wait a sec, there's a lot of math in here. Can we get polynomial algebra? And I think the reason I like it is because the math is a little dry and maybe a little boring, but the math puzzles is something that kids really love, so it kind of spices it up in a way that kids really want to tackle it as opposed to just being able to go through it. One is find applications of the math that you teach. Uh, even if you can't develop a full unit around it, even if you can't develop it into a task, even if it's just a really good question or example in class, that's a gateway to really opening up um, a more traditional style into this NYP style. Two, I'd say we've got to start finding other ways and um, innovative ways of delivering content. Lecture is a pretty traditional style. Um, not all kids learn well through um, sitting and listening, uh, and I think kids really want to be mathematicians, and so to allow them to investigate content, to come up with their own theories and generalizations and test them, that that's really kind of what it's all about. So I, I would say um, those two things. Um, and then the last one, I, I said it before, is start easy and go easy on yourself. Because unit planning is hard. To develop a really good lesson is actually really, really difficult. So imagine an entire unit of really good lessons. Um, and, and so if you can just do the, a few investigations and a few applications, it'll make the unit planning process so much easier. Even if you can't get to the entire thing right away, at least you're on the right path. Uh, for me, it's all about the applications. And so I, would, I always say this to students and teachers, just be open to your inner math geek. Is Look around, whatever's going on around you, there's probably some math in it. And if you notice that the students are perking up about either World Cup soccer or something that's going on in your community, that try to bring that into the, uh, into the classroom. Because the moment you do that and the moment that you see students really getting excited about mathematics, it's, it's contagious. And then you start to get excited about it and then you start going for other things as well. So find that nugget. Find that thing that almost kids might think is maybe either a little unconventional or they just didn't expect it. The unexpected is always amazing in a math class. So try to find those things, and you'll be amazed at how it transforms how you teach. Uh, one would be authentic. Uh, these are authentic units with authentic activities that actual teachers use in their classroom. Um, two is discovery. Uh, I, I think the book is not just just students discovering mathematics, because we want kids to be mathematicians. And when we deny them that opportunity to investigate math, um, to come up with their own explanations and proofs. We kind of denied the math itself. It, it, it basically gets boiled down to rules. Um, so if kids can do the discovery, they get to see math in a different light. And I think the books also allow teachers to discover what the MYP could really look like um, in a math classroom. Um, and I think the last one I would say is, is innovative. 
Uh, I've never seen a textbook where the answers just aren't given to students that then they can read it and move on. But they actually have to develop the answers. So we have a resource now where all of a sudden students are asked to develop the math on their own. Um, and, and I think that's, pretty, that's a pretty novel idea. Even though that's the way math education is going, I haven't really seen that in, in a text yet.